Thought we'd talk a little bit about constitutions. Constitutions come up a lot, and I see a lot of people teaching constitutions, and I've been teaching the U.S. Constitution for years now, but uh, it's interesting when you see, you know, Supreme Court rulings and, and you know, couple fined $100,000 for not baking a cake for a homosexual couple, and I'm like, you know... The fact that we even have to argue these things shows that we don't, we're, we're not even close to understanding the concept of freedom, okay? When, when you have freedom, when you have freedom, a man doesn't tell you who you get to work for, okay? When the constitutions are upheld, you don't have to bake a cake for anyone you don't want to, right? Now, people can disagree whether that was right or not, but here's the reality, People say, well, we do this to prevent discrimination. The government does not have a right to prevent discrimination in the individual. That is not an authority of the Constitution or of the government. Period. A human right is to say, I will work for whom I will. I'm going to act on my faith the way I want as long as I'm not harming another. And you cannot make a logical argument that harming another is refusing to work for them. That's not harm. That's not a crime and has no victim, okay? Now, they'll say, well, what about places that won't serve a black person, okay? Well, now, the government doesn't have a right to discriminate, right? They're supposed to be equal. But if you want to have a bar or a restaurant and you want to put a sign up in that restaurant that says, no blacks allowed, no whites allowed, no Indians allowed, no Mexicans allowed, right? Or, or, or it, maybe the sign says if maybe it's a maybe it's a black owned restaurant, and the sign says whites have to use the back door. Now, if you're a private business, you have one hundred percent every right to do that. I also have a right to say you're a racist idiot, and I'm going to go to the restaurant next door. See, that's economics. That's free markets. We don't have economics or free markets in the USA at all. They don't exist there anymore. So let's talk about constitutions. People say, well, what does the Constitution say? Well, the U.S. Constitution is very minimal, guys. There's a reason it fits in my pocket, right? It's simple. But the Bill of Rights is arguably one of the most beautiful Bill of Rights in the constitutions around the world. Maybe there's better, and there's certainly worse. Uh, in Mexico, the Constitution here has a lot of issues because it's very large and they keep modifying and expanding it to suit the corrupt government's needs. They do have some very good rights enumerated. In certain areas, it's more concise than the U.S. Bill of Rights. For example, the right to travel in the Mexican Constitution is very firm. Uh, the Mexican Constitution clearly affirms that non-residents or non-citizens have the same rights. That's something that's true in the U.S. Constitution, but it's not directly stated. And because of that, people are completely ignorant. They say, oh, people from people from across the border don't have the same rights as I do. I'm American. Illegal aliens don't have the same rights. Well, wait a minute. The Constitution does not grant the government the right to define illegal aliens. The federal government doesn't even have a right to be engaged in border crossings and border patrols. They only have a right to act under the stated clauses in the Constitution and to detain people under probable cause. No no one has a right to stop you coming into a country and say, I'm going to search your stuff because when you're a private entity traveling. Okay? So we're talking about all this different stuff, right? We're talking about, about homosexual wedding cakes and travel and U.S. constitutions and making constitutions. And here's what I'm coming to with this. And I'm going to try and keep it fairly simple tonight. The only thing that a government, a Supreme Court, let's say. Now, there's some people that would take the argument that the U.S. government doesn't even have a right to take on cases that are appealed, that are state-level matters, that are, that are matters of, of civil rights, because in the original Constitution, uh, that, that it, it wasn't technically thought of that way. And then under the 14th Amendment, it said, okay, the Bill of Rights applies to the states as well. But I think there's a bigger conversation in that. The Bill of Rights does not give you rights. No Constitution gives you rights, guys. You have your rights. I, I talked about this at the beginning. I had the hat on. I'm going to put the hat on because people are come. I was wearing the hat. That's why my hair's a mess. Okay. I've actually had a pretty good day. All told. Hi, Kelly. Um, all right. So the Constitution does not give you any rights. And this is what people always mistake. Well, what does the Constitution say? And I say, well, that's good to know. You should know your rights. You should know how to argue those rights. I've been doing that for years with cops all over the country and now in other countries. Okay. 
But it's really important to understand and teach your children the Constitution does not give you rights. It reminds you of rights. And so people say, well, what can the Supreme Court rule on, right? Well, the Supreme Court certainly doesn't have a right to rule in favor of a person being forced to work for someone else. The Supreme Court, you could say, does have a right to overturn a corrupt state's case because the Supreme Court is supposed to be your appeal process, right? If if your local courts are corrupt, you appeal to your to your your superior court, then to your state court, then to your state supreme court, right? Then to the, the federal district court and eventually to the supreme court because there's supposed to be so many levels. There's supposed to be a whole bunch of levels on and on and on that you could keep appealing to overcome corrupt government in your state or your county or your municipality. And so there's nothing wrong with the supreme court making a ruling and saying under people's rights, this conviction or this fine or this charge from the state is a violation of the Constitution, and the states agreed to recognize these rights, okay? So the court can make a ruling on that, and they can overturn a conviction. But here's the thing, and people say, well, the Supreme Court ruled, and there it is. What people don't understand is it's not a two-way street with a Supreme Court. The moment a Supreme Court rules against your rights, their ruling is a fraud. And people say, well, that's convenient. You can just say they ruled against your rights. Well, you know what? It was meant to be. It was meant that the people would remain vigilant. That if the Supreme Court went rogue, which they have, if the state courts went rogue, which they have, if the municipal courts went rogue, which they have, if your sheriffs went rogue, which they have, it was meant that the people would understand and know their rights and refuse and resist and say no, that they would opt out. See, in the U.S., if people failed to show up for courts, if they failed to show up for jail, if you started walking away, even if it means leaving the U.S.A., for a time to continue standing and refusing to comply, you would topple the tyranny. You don't defend tyranny by playing along with it. You don't defend liberty, that is. You don't defend against tyranny by saying, I'm going to play on their battlefield their way. That's not how a warrior fights. But what of the constitutions? People say, well, what about the Constitution here? Does this Constitution rec grant my rights? Does it recognize my rights? How's the Mexican Constitution? You know what? Most constitutions are broken in one way or another. The U.S. Constitution has lots of problems. It is a very good bill of rights. The Mexican Constitution has a lot of problems. It has some things that are very good. But you have to understand, and it's very important. And so when I see people focus completely on teaching the Constitution, I say, yes, we teach the Constitution because it's a great way to understand what laws are void. Because if a law is void, Alexander Hamilton said in Federalist 78, if, if a law violates the Constitution, it's automatically void. You don't need a Supreme Court ruling. The people need to treat it as void. That's what we did with I-594 in Washington years ago when we brought that rally together. But people have to continue standing. They have to continue nullifying. That's what it's all about. Nullifying a bad law. Standing for liberty is not about saying, I'm going to file a lawsuit and win in the courts and prove them wrong. It's about refusing to obey corruption. And it's the same with, with any law, guys. And so if you understand your rights, then you say, okay, I understand my constitution and I can argue that and I can affirm that to the officer or the official. But then you say, I'm going to disobey anything that violates that. And that's the most important. We have a Second Amendment, and that's great. But we don't really have a Second Amendment. There's no gun rights in the USA. If you exercise the actual human right you have that is affirmed in the Constitution to guns, you will go to prison. And it's happening every day. There's people that have been locked in prison for decades for nothing more than possessing the wrong gun. So the U.S. no longer has a Constitution. And this is what's interesting. People say constitution, constitution, but it's meaningless if you don't rebel. The constitution was not a construct designed to grant us rights that were upheld by a Supreme Court. The constitution was a document to remind us when our rights were being violated and should the government or all the way to the Supreme Court itself not 100% affirm those rights, their authority was then null and void, see John Locke, and we were to disobey. So I see all the people that claim to be patriots, but they support the blue. They support 
you know, the loyalism. They support the politicians. They support this politician, the Republican, their party, that party. And they don't even understand what patriotism means. Because to be a patriot, you defend your people and your rights. It's not about your party or your platform. And it's so important that we understand that. We have rights as human beings, and they were never granted by constitutions. They were inherent, God-given, however you believe, but they are yours. And they go down to that fundamental right to your life, your liberty, and your property. These are all fundamental human rights, and all rights can be derived from them. Because if you don't have your, your property, you can't have your life. And if you don't have your liberty, you can't maintain your life. And if you don't have your life, you have no rights at all. It's so simple. And if, if people would understand that simple concept that our rights derive from life, liberty, and property and they're inherent and they can't be granted or taken away by anyone, then governments don't have the power to violate our rights, only to be the vigilant watchers of them, the bodyguards of our rights. That's the only role of government in a lawful society. And so we see all these, hey, Stephen, good to see you. Thanks, guys. We see all these rulings and debates and, and pundits and all this stuff. And I'm like, what are you guys talking about? This is so simple. A child can understand it. And we debate about rights and who has the right to rule on what and who has the right to defend what. But we all have the right to defend our own rights and those around us. And so as, as the blue line constantly violates their, our rights for a living, as the courts affirm and find probable cause for their violations, and as Supreme Courts most of the time back up their violations, we say, well, the masters have ruled. And I say no, because when the magistrate fails to uphold our rights, he steps outside the authority that he was granted, and he fails to be an authority. This is law. And I'm paraphrasing John Locke there. But if we stand by that, if we stop playing the faction and the games and falling for the propaganda and the distractions, then we can understand law. And once you understand law, you realize that it's so far gone in the U.S. People are so willing to be slaves. They so support the enemies of freedom and the traitors that the only way that the USA will ever find freedom again is through complete collapse and probably divine intervention. And in the meantime, we got to think about, well, how do we resist? If you resist in the USA today, they will kill you or lock you in a cage if you fail to comply with even the smallest thing because they're psychopathic, insane criminals. And every single cop enforcer participates in this, either physically or behind the scenes, at the point of a gun to force you to obey illegal laws. And the Supreme Court's not going to help you. The politicians aren't going to help you. Occasionally, we have victories in these courts, but they're not pushing back the tyranny. They're not tearing down the prisons that are filled with millions of people who were denied due process. We have to stand up. And that starts with us saying no and loving our neighbor enough to stand up and speak out against these terrorists who violate us. In the USA in 2017, the police killed almost 1,200 people. That was about 100 times more than terrorists killed. And so you have to ask yourself a simple question. As politicians talk about ISIS or the border or this or that and sell us fear, who are the real terrorists? You can't support the people committing the most acts of violence and terror. The one organization and their cronies committing all the violence proportionally, the most acts of violence, terror, kidnapping, robbery in your country, you cannot support them and support the Constitution, and support human rights. You have to say no. You have to speak out. That's what constitutions are really about. They're there to remind you of your rights. Their job was never to stand up and protect them for you.